Hi there and welcome to an update on the geologic activity taking place at Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii on the Big Island. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today is February 1st. It's about 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And today what I'd like to do is go over the latest update from the USGS, look at some of the data, also provide a little bit of background into what's happening on the south flank of Kilauea. I've got some diagrams to share with you and some other bits of information. So again, thanks for joining me and appreciate your time in paying attention to this, this volcano and what's going on there. Um, this popped up on my radar, I've been watching it slowly over the past few weeks. Well, really all the time I'm monitoring at least a little bit, but my you know interest level ebbs and flows depending on exactly what's going on. And a couple of days ago, things started to have a little bit of an uptick in terms of activity. So I've shifted some of my focus to Kilauea, but I'm still taking a, a good look at Iceland. So if you're used to watching these with Iceland updates, I'm still keeping an eye on what's going on there, and I'll try to continue to balance these as best as I can moving forward. But let's get right to it with our data for today. So we talked about the update from the USGS yesterday, but there was a new update from today, February 1st, that happened this morning. Um, so the increase in seismicity uh, is still going on and it's shifted a little bit uh, to the southwest. I'll show you the plot of that here in a minute. And so they've seen it, a lot of these earthquakes clustered around this existing fault system, the Kauai fault system. I'll show you that as well here in a second. It says here the Kilauea summit remains pressurized. Uh, in recent months, unrest has escalated quickly and an eruption could occur in the future with little warning. So essentially this area is primed. This could just be an intrusion of magma, a pulse of magma moving into the shallow subsurface of the volcano that doesn't result in an eruption, or this could quickly escalate into uh, a full-scale eruption quite quickly, and that's why there's the, the caution and the prudence that's being issued by the USGS. Um, so seismicity in the south caldera region up at the summit has quieted, and the activity is concentrated a little bit further to the southwest of the caldera. Uh, the depths of the volcanoes are about one to four kilometers. So quite shallow, uh, and the rates have persisted of about 25 to 30 earthquakes per hour. Um, so a lot of earthquakes happening there, definitely a, a seismic swarm. The summit region remains at a high level of inflation. So the whole summit region, or most of the summit region is, is bulging as that magma supply into the region continues. Um, and so they talk about the tilt meters there and it's suggestive of ground inflation to the southwest. So because the magma is coming up to the southwest of the summit area, we're seeing the tilt meters um, reflect that to some degree. Uh, no volcanic gases to note of just yet. That's, it's too early in the game for anything like that there. So, so let's switch over to the earthquake view here. Uh, zoom out a little bit. And so this is the USGS feed of earthquakes within the past day. Let me go ahead and refresh that, make sure it's up to date. Um, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, earthquakes in the last hour will be a red dot. Earthquakes in the last 24 hours will be orange. Here is the summit caldera of Kilauea and the Hale Mauma'u crater, the centralized lava lake in the southwest portion of the caldera that's been the most active over the last couple of years mainly. Uh, Kilauea Iki crater, crater over here to the, to the east. Uh, but you can see the, the, the trend of earthquakes here along this southwest rift zone area. And again, these are quite shallow, just clicking on a few of them. Yeah, these are like 0.1 kilometers, one kilometer. Uh, yeah, quite shallow earthquakes. Some end up with like a negative value, but they're, the whole point is they're, they're quite shallow. In general, uh, mainly smaller earthquakes, but generally below threes uh, for the most part. And this you know, reflects basically a couple hundred earthquakes that have ha we've had here over the last few days. But we'll get into that when we get to some of the earthquake data. We'll also zoom in on, you can see some of these cracks running uh, approximately east-west across the south flank of Kilauea. Kilauea. This is the Kauai Fault System. And I'll explain this here in a minute. But some of these earthquakes might be occurring along that trend there. But in general, we have this sort of southwest trend to those earthquakes. Um, let's switch over and then maybe we'll look at also the last seven days. So this is the past week, the earthquakes we've seen here. Now there's a different couple different colors that pop up. So the yellow ones would be earthquakes within the last week, orange within the last 24 hours, and red within the last hour. So you can see the total number of quakes there. Uh, and then again, just the ones 
over the last 24 hours. So you can see even though we've had quakes here in the last 24 hours, um, and if it showed the last 48 hours, I think you'd see the lion's share of those because there was definitely an uptick in earthquake activity starting yesterday on January 31st. Let's go to some of the data from the USGS, um, starting with the seismic data. So this is updated. We'll go ahead and refresh it one more time uh, up till today on the 21st. So this looks at the past week of earthquakes and a little bit crazy in here, but you can see and maybe we can make that a little bit bigger just for clarity. Uh, the summit region of Kilauea up here and then mainly this 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 southwest to northeast trend of earthquakes over in this region here. I did make an error yesterday in my update when I talked about the Pahala quakes. These are actually part of the deeper magma supply that feeds both Mauna Loa and Kilauea. At least that's how they've been interpreted. I think I misspoke yesterday when I talked about these being uh, related to the southward movement of the volcano. That was that was an error on my part. Well, but we'll get to that. You can see. Uh, part of those fault systems, the Helena Poly fault system right here, and we'll talk about the Kauai fault system as well. Uh, this is another plot of the earthquake data. So this is, if we take this map here and draw a cross section across it from west to east, um, this would be what we would see there in terms of depths. So you can see those deeper Pahala quakes on the western edge of the map above and then the big clustering of these shallow quakes that have uh, caused the USGS to upgrade the activity level to to this uh, alert status or uh, watch status I suppose. Here's earthquakes over the past week so the blue each bar graph uh, or histogram is basically showing how many earthquakes per day so you could see a week ago very few earthquakes per day maybe 50 or so and then you can see that ramping up uh, to about I guess what two two three hundred almost four hundred uh, between the 27th and the 30th and then the last two days a lot more earthquakes today's quite a bit lower but the day's not quite done yet so we'll have to see how February 1st stacks up but the reason the alert level was raised was the earthquakes we had yesterday so we had upwards of 700 quakes happening on January 31st uh, and so that combined with some of the other data prompted the the advisory status. Um, looking at th the earthquakes plotted up over time, so you can see this shows the earthquake depth and then for each day, January 26th, 27th, and you can see between the 27th and the 28th, the earthquake frequency really picking up at these shallow levels, a little bit of a lull there around the beginning of the 29th, uh, and then picking up and being quite robust here the last two days. Looks like some of these circles are, are magnitude four, so we did have at least a couple magnitude fours in that seismic swarm as well. Um, and then this is our station. This is the station on the west end of the Kilauea caldera, and so this is showing tilt. So you can see pretty stable, and then when that earthquake swarm hits you can see a downward motion so the tilt it's tilting uh, down towards the, the the southwest here so as that magma is being drained out of some of the summit area and moving into some of these other places um, that's suggestive of of that magma movement right there with that trend um, okay so let's see what I want to show here this will show us some of the the GPS data so we can go in here and pick a couple of these stations similar to what we saw yesterday um, this station here overall movement to the to the south over time uh, as magma is in, inflated and this goes back a, a, this is a two-year plot just to be transparent and then you can see the upward movement of this station uh, beginning about well in the fall but really kind of ramping up in October of this past year 2023 and then just into the last month or so here um, I don't want to go through each individual station. I think it's a similar trend to what we saw yesterday. Increase in earthquake activity, um, GPS measurements in the tilt showing that magma is moving in the subsurface. And so those all have led to the, uh, the new status we see here, which is uh, a watch, which is their orange level. Uh, red would mean that the eruption is occurring uh, or, or very imminent. 
Um, so this is about as high as the the advisory level can go without uh, actually having a full-blown eruption. So what I want to spend most of our time with here is explaining a little bit of the data here, but then also explaining um, what we see happening at Kilauea and the Big Island of Hawaii in general. So remember that as these hotspot volcanoes emerge from the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, that they're built on a pile of rubble. The eruptions that occurred underwater when the volcano was still underwater and there was no island, um, those lava water interactions tend to fragment the rock, break it up into pieces. You tend to get uh, pillow lavas uh, at the beginning. And so that, that brecciated broken up rock is what they're calling in this uh, diagram here. And this comes from the, the new roadside geology of Hawaii published by Mountain Press. But you can see this is what they're calling the hyaloclastite deposits. But this is just really just rubble, broken up rock. It doesn't have a lot of cohesion to it. Uh, it's not a really strong base, so very different than the lava flows we see at the surface. But this is the foundation or the pedestal that all the Hawaiian islands are built upon. And upon this, once the volcano builds up above the ocean level, it starts erupting your more typical lava flows, which are very dense. Um, they exert a tremendous amount of weight downwards on this pile of rubble. So we have a couple things going on here. We have the, the erosion of the wave activity along the margins. Uh, we have this unstable and um, not very cohesively strong foundation or base at the bottom of the volcano or the island. But then sitting upon that, this this immense weight, this stack of basaltic lava flows um, that rises on the Big Island over 13,000 feet in elevation. And that sets up a very unstable situation. And so what you get then, this is just sort of the setting the stage and explaining what the volcano or island's um, anatomy sort of looks like in terms of its internal parts. Uh, if we skip over here to this diagram, also from the same book, you can see that, and let me actually go back one real quick. Let's go to the Google Earth image for a second. So Kilauea is the, the one of the youngest volcanoes on, on the Big Island of Hawaii, and it sits next to its neighbors with Mauna Loa, which is just massive. So this is a much more mature, um, kind of a volcano in its prime, whereas Kilauea is just kind of getting going. But the point here is that Kilauea is buttressed somewhat with Mauna Loa. Because Mauna Loa is so much bigger and more bulky, Kilauea is supported, if you will, at least on its, on its western side and northwestern sides by Mauna Loa. And with all the lavas that have come out of Kilauea, and because we have this unstable foundation of rubble and broken up rock in the below the sea level here. That means that parts of this volcano, Kilauea, is unstable. And so periodically we're seeing signs of it sliding into the ocean and that develops fault systems. So if you look at various parts of Kilauea, you can see these big uh, escarpments and they call these polys down in Hawaii, these just big cliff faces where there's a pronounced um, break in the slope. And so this is a fault system here. Uh, this is part of the collapse or seaward movement of Kilauea over time. If we come up a little higher, you can start to see some of these fractures, these cracks. These are faults running more or less east-west across the, across the south flank of Kilauea. And you can follow these you know, from the southwest rift zone pretty much all the way over to the east rift zone. Um, one more thing about that, and then I'll get to that other diagram here in a second, is if we add in the, the rift zones and put the caldera in there as well, and let's just throw the labels up also. Um, notice that the east rift zone has this little weird bend to it. Well, that's because the east rift zone originated as a straight line across this area. It was more or less headed due east from the caldera out towards the coast. But you see this bend in this because this has actually moved the whole, this whole flank of Kilauea, the southeast flank, has slid towards the ocean. And so it's dragged all these cones and conduits uh, with it. So the east rift zone is deflected to the south because of the southward movement of the entire volcano uh, because it's unsupported 
has so much weight on it it's unsupported on the seaward side and so that's why you get that that movement there so let me go to that diagram because I think that'll help explain things while I'm arm waving here so here's Mauna Loa on the left so Mauna Loa sits here uh, the big brother the big large edifice next to Kilauea Kilauea is over here at a much lower elevation but you can see that it's built upon partially the, the flank and sort of the the base of Mauna Loa and Kilauea's um, movement is towards the ocean because it's unsupported on that side and so we have that first fault system I pointed out that's closer to the ocean the the poly the cliff faces there and then there's this other fault system that's further up the slope called the Kauai fault system that runs across it um, so the point is is that these fault systems not only are they big places where there's big cracks in the surface because the island is sliding in that direction but it's also places where we can get eruptions so if you look at the trend of these and let's I have labels for these two I drew I didn't draw all of them on here but I drew uh, a few of the more prominent faults running east to west across the south flank of Kilauea um, and you can see how these come across the south or the south side of the volcano but if you come up to here this is all the, the eruption from the 1974 uh, event you can actually see the fissures that these erupted from pretty much follow that east-west or slightly southwest northeast trend there's a nice little zone of those fissures right there and so the cracks and some of the fractures on the flanks of the volcano are caused by the southward movement into the ocean it's slowly slumping into the ocean and these fracture systems in these faults then become conduits at times for magma to exploit and flow out of so we don't see that with these ones here but you can see a set up here um, like I pointed out here that's pretty close to parallel to the Kauai fault system running in that east-west manner there the other thing we can see if we come down the southwest rift zone uh, these were eruptions in 1823 so let me take the let me take the label off of the just so we can see it so let's just get rid of that big orange line for now there's also a, th uh, a feature called the great crack which runs from pretty close to the ocean you can see it right here uh, let's see if we can get a nice view it's a little dark on the image but you can see that crack running yeah the 1823 flow and you can see that running up parts of the southwest rift zone so that remember the southwest rift zone exists be partially because the whole south side of Kilauea is sliding seaward and that's pulling away from the Mount Aloha side creating these big cracks in the ground you can see there's the big one there but there's smaller ones out here in the desert as well and that at times these actually erupt or these provide pathways for uh, the lava to erupt so if you come back up here you can see some of those in the southwest rift zone along those fractures and cracks those were actually the eruptive vents that a lot of these lava flows followed uh, as they came came down slope uh, let's see here get a little better view there um, okay then we'll throw the throw the orange line back up um, okay so I thought there was something else I was going to mention there um, fault systems yeah so l let's go back to the earthquake data real quick and look at where we're seeing that and then maybe th sort of look at that and then yeah so the earthquakes are happening more or less in here so the big question now would be where where's this thing going to erupt next if it going if we're going to have an eruption due to these earthquakes and this magma intrusion on this south side of Kilauea how's this going to play out and there's really I guess probably two maybe three scenarios that are more likely than others there's a, still a pretty good chance because we've seen most of Kilauea's recent activity has been in the south side the southwest side of its caldera so there's a good chance that even though magma is intruding here to the south um, that if we get an, an eruption the next eruption is still confined to Halemaumau the, the big crater we see here in the caldera floor 
The other possibility is we have some eruptions along the southwest rift zone or close to it. Uh, so that's possibility. It's also possible that the magma could erupt as it did in 1974 on these flank vents, these vents that opened up on the flank of Kilauea, more or less parallel to the Kauai fault system. We could get something similar to that uh, where we feed lava flows down into this area from sources like that. Um, and it's even possible, even though most of the earthquake data, I believe, was further up the slope, uh, there were some earthquakes down here, and it's possible that you know mag the magma could intrude further to the southwest. Even in the last day or two, we've seen it move a little bit further to the southwest. If that continues, we could get an eruption further down the rift zone, closer to the coastline, and so that would look like. Um, and maybe even following you know the great crack or one of these other fracture systems down in here because these have produced lava flows as you can see that went all the way to the coastline and to the ocean uh, it's worth pointing out that this part of hawaii this part of kilauea is very dry this sits in the rain shadow of kilauea you can see how much greener it is on this side uh, and along the east rift zone it's much greener so the trade winds are coming from the northeast uh, the Hilo side in this region gets a lot of rain. It's it's a tropical rainforest. There's abundant vegetation, uh, but as it passes over the summit region of Kilauea and it starts to descend, uh, this becomes a much drier area. Area uh, it's it's you know given up most of its moisture on the northeast side, and so this becomes a much drier region. This is in the rain shadow of of Kilauea, so it's a much drier zone over here. Um, but the good news is no matter what scenario plays out, whether we get an eruption up near the summit area in Halemaumau Crater or any eruption on the southwest rift zone, whether it's high in the rift zone, something in the Kauai Fault System, or even something further down in the, in the lower part of the rift zone. Notice where the road is here. Now I've thrown the major highway, Highway 11 on there. And this is all within the national park. So the good news is there's really no threat to infrastructure or people. There's no homes in this area. Uh, it's a very different, it would be a very different eruptive event versus what we saw in 2018, where we had eruptions down here in the lower east rift zone at the eastern tip of the, of the island. Um, so if we see an eruption here, it should be a great spectacle uh, without some of the, the stress and the worry over uh, people and structures and homes and buildings. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. I just wanted to share some of the, the diagrams with you and just some of the things I've been thinking and looking at. I need to probably come in here and add some more faults in my Google Earth and get some more of the details in here. But hopefully that was helpful. We'll continue to monitor the situation in Hawaii as well as Iceland. And I will get with you as soon as I can if anything takes place, whether that's a significant change in the data, in the monitoring data, or if that's a full-scale eruption at either location. So appreciate your support. Appreciate you spending time with me. Hope this made sense and helps you learn more about these volcanic systems, which I find fascinating. And it's been a real pleasure and an honor to share with you today. Thanks so much and take care.